Right, this is a micrometer. It's used for measuring your parts very precisely. Uh, its precision usually is one hundredth of a millimeter. And uh, they come in 25 millimeter increments, meaning that this frame varies and the travel is always 25 millimeters. So this particular model measures from zero to 25 millimeters. So let's now have a quick look at uh, how the micrometer is built and then we're gonna have a look at how to measure with the micrometer. Right, so this still is our zero to 25 millimeter micrometer and it consists of several parts. Uh, this is the frame as we talked about. This varies from micrometer to micrometer depending on its size. Then we've got our anvil which is the static part here and our spindle which is this part that moves back and forth. And here we can see a locking nut which is used to lock our dimension. And then we can rotate with a thimble here which has our graduation that shows us uh, the hundredth and tenth of a millimeter. Then our sleeve here has a graduation also and it shows us the whole millimeters and half millimeters as well. At the end of the thimble here is a ratchet which ensures that uh, we always use the same force when measuring a part. If we screw the thimble all the way back uh, we actually can take it apart and see our micrometric thread inside. You can see a micrometric thread here. This is a crucial part of the device and it's precisely ground fine thread. Uh, it has a 0.5 millimeter pitch. So when I rotate the thimble uh, 360 degrees, uh, the phase, the measuring phase advances 0.5 millimeters. And that's why this graduation here is divided in 50 pieces. And one of the reasons why those micrometers come in 25 millimeter increments is this fine thread. Because to make such a precise and fine thread over a long distance uh, is not so easy and therefore it's very expensive, firstly. And secondly, so that you only have to rotate 25 millimeters back and forth because otherwise you would just be threading your spindle whole day and that's no fun. Right, when we are here we can uh, see the measuring face as well. We've got two measuring faces and uh, this is the most basic one. There are different ones especially made for measuring threads or gears for example. But this is the most basic one and probably the one you are going to come into contact with. And sometimes uh, the faces are made from different material, uh, which is a little bit more very resistant. Uh, this particular one has the same material, but I have 25 to 50 millimeter example here, which has a different material on the measuring face. Hopefully you can see it a little bit on the camera. So those are the most basic stuff you need to know about micrometers. And we can now have a look at how to measure with a micrometer. So I've got a part here and I just want to know how thick it is. So to measure it precisely, I'm going to take my micrometer and I'm going to bring it very close. When I'm close, I'm going to use this ratchet, which ensures the force is going to be the same all the time. And I'm just going to rotate it like two or three times. Then I'm going to lock it with the locking nut and now I can take a measurement. Firstly, we are going to have a look at this linear graduation here and we are going to uh, look at the top lines right here, which show us the full millimeters. So I can see four of them here and the bottom ones shows us half millimeters. So when you can see the half millimeter mark, you know that you are at four whole millimeters and somewhere between 4.0 and 4.5. And to see where, you're gonna look at this uh, graduation on the trimble and just have a look at where it lines up with this zero, uh, zero line here. So as you can see, mine lines up at 29. So I know I'm at 4.29 millimeters right now for this part. Pretty straightforward. You just have to be a little bit careful with those half millimeter marks and uh, yeah, just to look properly. 
if you now know what micrometer is, how it works and how to measure with it, hopefully. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward once you get a hold of it. And what I like to do to mitigate any errors is to take a measurement with calipers first to see what kind of dimensions I'm aiming for and then take a precise measurement with my micrometer. Alright, I hope this video was helpful and I'm gonna see you next time. Bye!